Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Bless the city of Norfolk and bless every citizen who resides within its boundaries and every city employee who works to make our city, ble our city great. Father, bless our mayor, city manager, and this council as we labor together in the calling of public service. Give, give us the wisdom to govern fairly and ethically with equality, integrity, and compassion and allow us to represent our city in a spirit of excellence. I pray that you will guide us through these difficult economic times and give us the strength and wisdom we need to make the decisions that please us. These and all other blessings we ask in your son's name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which is against us, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegerio? Here. Mr. Riddick? Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Yes. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Here. Ben? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegerio? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The, um, will you please read the resolution for the closed meeting? A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegerio? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here. For those of you who do not, who do not regularly attend our council sessions, the process which we will follow for tonight's docket is the first thing we're going to do is take up public hearings. We have a number of them on, on schedule. I think there are what, seven of them. At the conclusion of the public hearings, we'll move to the consent agenda. We have several items there, but the council may choose or may elect to vote on all of these matters in one vote. All they are scheduling matters and rather perfunctory uh, matters, receipt of record, things like that. And then we move to, to the regular agenda. And we have 16, maybe have 17 items on the regular agenda. Again, we will take up and vote on all of these matters in just the way they are n numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of the regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, that's something that's not on the printed docket, you'll be given that opportunity. But in order to have your uh, name called, all we ask is, is, is that you sign a, a slip of paper which the clerk has made available in the rear of the conference, in the rear of the council, behind the council chambers before the meeting began. So that's how we'll move tonight. Uh, we do have one ceremonial matter, as uh, Steve Hawks. Steve, would you like to come up? If we have a proclamation for adoption, adoption awareness month, and we've got some other special guests with us, huh, Steve? Mm -hmm. We're glad to have all of you here. My own little fan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Steve, let me read the proclamation, yes, and we'd be glad to hear from you. Thank you all for coming down and joining us tonight. By the way, it's terrific. Wow. Okay. The proclamation reads, whereas the city of Norfolk recognizes that adoption gives children a loving, caring, nurturing, and permanent family, whereas more than 424,000 children in the United States and in, uh, in the foster care system must have a safe, healthy, and permanent home, whereas in Virginia there are more than 5,367 children waiting for permanent families, whereas more than 42 children in Norfolk are waiting for Norfolk citizens to provide each child with a permanent family, and whereas recognizing that each child deserves a family who loves them and is committed to their well-being and self-sufficiency as they move into adulthood, whereas all adopted families that open their hearts and homes play a unique and vital role in the lives of each child because each child will feel better about themselves, receive better health care, do better in school, and grow up to be better parents, workers, and citizens. Now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, to hereby proclaim November as Adoption Awareness Month in the City of Norfolk and urge all citizen to, citizens to join in a national effort to raise awareness about the importance of adoption given under my hand the 17th day of October 2012. Steve, I'll give you this and we'd love, you got a, a great group with you here tonight. We'd love to hear from you or anyone else who'd like to say something. Appreciate Thanks. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Thank you all for coming down here tonight, really. Mayor Frame, members of council, once again, we thank you for this proclamation recognizing Adoption Awareness Month. Just want to give you a few statistics, very short remarks. Uh, since January 1st of this calendar year, 19 children have been adopted. We have seven children that are in the process of being adopted. As a matter of fact, right before I left the office to come over tonight, I signed two, adop two adoptions, a sibling group. Uh, we have 37 children that have the goal of adoption but are not in adoptive placement at this time. We need adoptive parents, and we thank you for this proclamation because it helps us to recruit for that. What you see tonight is a representation of the good work. The folks that you see before you, these are members of our adoption unit at the Department of Human Services. They do tremendous work, and we want to honor them. And also, this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for our adoptive parents <laughs> and our buddies here. And these are some of our adoptive parents. I'd like to introduce you to the Lipscombs and also uh, to the Falls. And we're so glad to have you here with us. You want to shake his hand? Go, go <laughs> down, you man. There you go. <laughs> hey, how are you? Uh, nice. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, nice you. nice yeah, to meet you. Me. How are you? Nice to meet you. Great. I asked if any of the adults would, any of the parents would like to make a statement, and all of them said, no, no, but the kids immediately said, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'll take care of it. Let me just tell you about two events quickly, one that has passed and one that's coming. On November 8th, the Norfolk Human Services Adoption Unit hosted a diversity and adoption conference. Uh, it featured national speakers and attracted adoption professionals from Charlottesville, Richmond, and the Hampton Roads area. It was a great, successful event, and the credit belongs to these folks over here. On November 27th, the annual Adoption Day celebration will take place at the Norfolk Circuit Court at 2 p.m. The Honorable William P. Williams will preside over a special ceremony honoring Norfolk's newest adoptive parents, a total of 26 many of them sibling groups. And it should be noted that we have a very special guest speaker this year. Uh, the wife of our city manager, Mrs. Jones, will be our featured speaker. So hope you can attend with us. What day is, could you tell us what day is yes, that again? Yes, sir. November 27th, 2 p.m., Norfolk Circuit Court. I'm sure we'll get a notice of that. Won't we? There you are. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, Mr. Thank Hawks, you thank, so you. Much. thank you for bringing us to us. Thanks for the Lipson. Thanks for the falls for coming down here. This is certainly an important issue. We certainly appreciate you again raising the community's awareness. Lady, thanks for coming down. For calls. Okay, that's the only ceremonial matter on tonight's document. So we'll move directly then to public hearing number one, please. Public hearing one uh, scheduled for this day to hear comments on a lease agreement with the Beacon Light Civic League Incorporated for the use of certain space in the Berkeley Neighborhood Multi-Service Center. Is this, uh, the member of the public has signed up to address the council in this matter. So we can call the roll, please. I have an ordinance approving a lease agreement with the Beacon Light Civic League Incorporated for the use of certain space in the Berkeley Neighborhood Multi-Service Center dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two. Public hearing two scheduled for this day. Uh, to hear comments on the condemnation of a sidewalk easement on property located at 2934 Cape Henry Avenue. Again, no one else, no one's here to address the council on this matter, so you can call the roll. I have an ordinance finding a public necessity for acquisition of a permanent right-of-way easement to construct and maintain a handicap access ramp for a public sidewalk at 2934 Cape Henry Avenue and for temporary construction easement to facilitate improvement of the public sidewalk along Cape Henry Avenue uh, and authorizing the acquisition by condemnation of both the permanent and temporary easements at 2934 Cape Henry Avenue. Uh, and the expenditure of a sum of $250 to acquire such. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing three, please. Public hearing three scheduled for this day to hear comments on the condemnation of a sidewalk easement on property located at 3014 Cape Henry Avenue. Uh, just a second. Dan Montague? Good evening. 
Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, Mr. Jones. My name is Dan Montague. I live at 4605 Crick Street here in the city of Norfolk. We need sidewalks all up and down Cape Henry Avenue from one end of it to the other. I was on it uh, last Friday. Almost got hit by a car because there's no place to walk but in the street. And anyway, uh, we, we have drainage ditches there that could be, pipes could be put in them and we could put sidewalks over them. So why don't we do this, you know, so that people walking up and down Cape Henry don't have to take their life in their hands. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Okay, you can call the roll, please. I have an ordinance finding a public necessity for acquisition of a permanent right-of-way easement to construct and maintain a handicap access ramp um, on the southeast corner of private property located at 3014 Cape Henry Avenue and for temporary construction easement to facilitate improvement of public sidewalks along Cape Henry Avenue in front of the private property and authorizing the acquisition by condemnation of both the permanent and temporary easements at 3014 Cape Henry Avenue and authorizing expenditure of $250 to acquire such. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Uh, Mr. Pishko, is this the first time um, since the new eminent domain um, rules have been applied that this is or that we're doing this? Um, no, I, I think we've done um, several but that they're very different from some of the larger projects that we had for like East Beach and right I'm saying since the new rules have been applied yes this is uh, one of several these are not the oh rules. okay okay all right but, but, but you're talking about the constitutional amendment y yeah right uh, th those, no. are not, those are not in effect yet right no no I'm talking about even within the last two years because uh, yes we've done a few before this within the last two years but, yes. um, but you're right I mean it's very seldom yeah right just for future reference with yeah. it, so. But aye, yeah. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four? You don't see that. Public hearing four scheduled for this day to hear comments on the application of Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority for the closing, vacating, and vacating of a portion of three small segments of East Ocean View right-of-way, as well as a portion of Old 23rd Bay Street from Pleasant Avenue to East Ocean View Avenue by 6-0 Vote Planning Commission recommends approval. And call the roll, please. I have um, four ordinances for this. The first is an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing Old 23rd Bay Street from Pleasant Avenue to East Ocean View Avenue, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second is an ordinance closing and vac vacating and discontinuing a 10-foot strip South of the northern line of East Ocean View Avenue, 62 feet more or less east of Old 23rd Bay Street, eastwardly 275 feet more or less, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Aye. Excuse me. The third is an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing a 15-foot strip north of the southern line of East Ocean View Avenue from Old 23rd Bay Street, eastwardly 159 feet more or less. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Fourth is an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing a 15-foot strip north of the southern line of East Ocean View Avenue, 199 feet more or less, east of Old 23rd Bay Street, eastwardly, 47 and a half feet more or less. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? <coughs> Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. Public hearing five, please. Public hearing five scheduled for this day to hear comments on the application of Bay Seafood to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 to change the land use classification from medium density residential to commercial office and for a change of zoning from R11 moderate density multiple family to conditional C2 corridor commercial on property located at 1300 through 1304 East Princess Anne Road. By 7-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. And Mr. Naguyan is here to answer questions if, if there are any. Mm -hmm. oh, Frank, why was this uh, necessary? It seems to me, if, if my memory serves me <coughs> correctly, it's always been some type of store. Uh, 
You're, you're correct, Mr. Riddick. This has always been a store. Mm -hmm. uh, the property is zoned residentially, however, and it sat vacant for more than two years. Okay, so okay. And so because of that, it lost its grandfathered status. I Mr. Nguyen brought both property, and we walked him through what we needed to do. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is the property that he wanted to get ABC. Um, I don't believe we've had any conversations about ABC at this license. They, the conversations we've had have always been about uh, opening this as a seafood market. Okay, because the gentleman that I talked to on the phone contacted me about how they could get uh, ABC, and we talked about how they were grandfathered and they stayed vacant for two years, and so it lost that exemption. Right. And so, you know, I don't know if he had that conversation with you, but, you know. We did not have the, any conversation dealing with ABC. It was always opening a seafood market at this place. That was one of the areas that we, you know, spent a lot of time trying to do away with that right across from Booger T High School. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, but that's not part of the. I know, but I'm just, you know, yeah. Yeah. that comes up. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank you. <coughs> All right. I have two ordinances for this, Mr. President. The first is an ordinance to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 so as to change the land use designation for property located at 1300 to 1304 East Princess Anne Road from medium density residential to commercial office. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And the second is an ordinance to rezone property located at 1300 to 1304 East Princess Anne Road from R11 to conditional C2. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay, our, I mean, uh, public hearing six, please. Public hearing six scheduled for this day um, to hear comments on the application of Tidewater Realty and Security Corporation to amend the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Chapter 6, Section 6-4.3 and Table 6-5 Commercial Districts and to add taxi cab operation as a special exception use in C4 zoning to amend the general plan from low density residential to commercial office for change of zoning from conditional C2 to conditional C4 on properties located at 6237 through 60, uh, 6259, 6263, 6267 Sewells Point Road to permit a taxi cab operation and for a change of zoning from C2 and Five Points Pedestrian Commercial Overlay District Zoning District to conditional C4 on properties located at 6262 and 6266 Sewells Point Road and 6249 and 6301 Chesapeake Boulevard to permit a taxi cab operation. And by a 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Call the roll. I have six ordinances for this, Mr. President. Okay, all right. The first is an ordinance to amend and reordain Section 6 4.3 6 and Table 6 5 of the Zoning Ordinance so as to permit taxi cab operation in the C4 district by special exception. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. I want to um, speak with my good friend Judy. Did you get that other issue resolved? I don't want, I want to make sure that you are comfortable with that other information as it relates to that property. Um, what other information? Uh, concerning the, the current uh, owner of that uh, property, the issues that we... Uh, yes, yes, yes. All okay. of that's resolved. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to make yes, sure sir. that you're prepared. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Aye. Yes. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? I just um, thank, thank you, Judy, for your continued investment in our city. So I know you've been talking about this expansion for a while, so it's good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second is an ordinance to amend the general plan so as to change the land use designation for properties at 6257 to 6259, 6263, and 6267 Sewells Point Road from low density residential to commercial office. <laughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Third is an ordinance to rezone properties located at 6257 to 6259, 6263, and 6267 Sewells Point Road from C2 to conditional C4. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye.
The fourth is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a taxi cab operation on those same properties on Sewell's Point Road. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Fifth is an ordinance to rezone properties located at 6262 and 6266 Sewell's Point Road and 6249 and 6301 Chesapeake Boulevard from C2 and Five Points Pedestrian Commercial Overlay District to Conditional C4. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And the last is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a taxi cab operation on properties located at 6262 and 6266 Sewell's Point Road and 6249 and 6301 Chesapeake Boulevard. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. They did? Yep. Okay, public hearing seven, please. Thank you. Public hearing seven scheduled for this day to hear comments on amending section 18 of the charter so as to cause the date of the election for mayor to coincide with the elections for the Super Ward Council seats beginning after the 2014 election. Okay, we have four members of the public here to address us on this matter. When I call your name, just come to the podium, please, and give us your name and your present home address, and then please limit your remarks to three minutes. Ronald Green. You got actors as I got actors. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and distinguished city councilman. <clears throat> First of all, I would consider the fact that I moved this council. Just a name and address. Oh, 5540 Barn Hollow Road, North of Virginia, 23502. I moved this council for no change in the election concerning mail and a greater effort to command the grassroots <clears throat> organizations to appear at this meeting for matters of public importance is imperative uh, because they can't make a definitive decision regarding this matter without the facts. And as far as the local press, I'm a bit uh, at a loss with that. What local press? <clears throat> so I moved that the city council, again, rescheduled this meeting until the citizenry have been adequately informed. Thank you. Thank you. Roy Perry Bay. Greetings, Honorable Mayor, members of the public. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. As you know, I live several cities away, but we maintain a post office box here for our coalition. Uh, I'm here because this matter is very important. I just flew back in town. I got a call that this was coming up, and I wanted to be here today. I bought some documents for uh, those members, new members of council, including new city manager, that may not be aware of uh, what this matter all pertains to. First of all, I want to thank the council, the mayor, and the general public uh, for the opportunity to speak here on behalf of the United Front for Justice. Uh, we object to the voting change uh, date for election of mayor and at-large election of mayor uh, based on the following concerns. As you know, Virginia is seeking to strike down Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act that is currently pending before the United States uh, Supreme Court. We think that that has great weight on moving elections around and changing elections, and we object to that. Uh, we also are concerned with vote dilution, voter suppression, uh, discrimination, and racial block voting. Now, Norfolk has a history of engaging in racial block voting, and I'm just so saddened that we haven't made the kind of progress that we need to make. Now, some of you may not be aware I was a part of a case against Norfolk on the question of at-large elections. And right now, we're working to get some registered voters. We're going to bring that matter full squarely before the city again and before the courts again. So I wouldn't be so kindly to laugh, um, city attorney. I want to submit these to the, uh, if the clerk will, uh, to those members uh, who currently are new to this council. You may not be aware of the North Carolina case of Thornburg versus Jingles. I had the opportunity to stop Mr. Burford at a gas station before he was elected on his council. And I called his attention to the fact that uh, 
the Collins case, uh, Attorney James Gay, that case uh, was decided by Thornburg versus Jingles, which was a North Carolina case that struck down vote dilution by a nine-majority Supreme Court decision and also denied Norfolk and told Norfolk to get out of here. Norfolk objected to it, and they were told to get out of here. That mandate still stands. Now, yet this matter was in court on at-large elections of man at large, and the whole idea that Norfolk is a legitimate government, nothing could be further from the truth. For those members who've never seen this order, Norfolk was under court order a mandate. It wasn't then, it applies now. When you change the elections of a whole city that affects citizens, like we're talking about doing this date, preclearance and getting approval from the court is relevant. Now, what Norfolk did was it got Justice Department preclearance, but it didn't go back to court. And they based the argument <coughs> that it was a matter of Collins applied then. Now, Mr. Mayor, uh, I think if the citizens fully support, that's important, and we'll move on and support that. But the city didn't go back to court, and now we're talking about moving some things around. We ought to do it with ethics, and we ought to do it with sound judgment, Mr. Mayor. And I think that's important. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, this matter has been, do we have to get this? Uh, do you mind if I ask Bernard? Sure. Sure. Bernard, does this need to be approved by the Justice Department to move the mayoral election? Y yes, this will require preclearance. And before we can submit, <coughs> the justice will require action by the General Assembly so they won't consider anything that's half-baked. It's got to be completely ready. And so that our normal process, when we ask the General Assembly for permission to change our charter, is once it's passed and has an effective date, we submit it to the Department of Justice. Right. Under the Voting Rights Act. Right. Thank you. Section 5. All right. Philip Hawkins. Good evening, Mayor Frame, Vice Mayor Burford, City Council members, and City Manager Jones. My name is Philip Hawkins. I reside at 3597 Mississippi Avenue here in Norfolk. And um, actually, I just want to apologize. I was I wanted to speak about the legislative priorities, but is that permissible at this time, or it is it? It is. Well, th this is the the six. But yeah, we'll let go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Well, um, I, um, there was just some confusion on that. I wanted my comments to be entered on the um, record for the legislative priorities. Um, I'm a part of Norfolk as um, a citizen and also as an employee of Norfolk Public Schools. And I wanted to express the legislative priorities that I know will be communicated with legislators as they approach their 2013 session. Um, we do need more funding restored to education. So the top three priorities that I feel that our city council should pursue would um, revolve around public education, funding, transportation, and infrastructure related to citywide flooding concerns um, for our city. Um, we, we need to have an emphasis on funding for our capital improvement projects for our schools, specifically the school buildings themselves. Of course, we find ourselves at an impasse with limited funding to rebuild schools at a rate that is necessary for our students to be able to excel, be able to compete. So we need to get help from the state in regards to that matter. And um, I would implore the city council to consider establishing a resolution that would support that, that would um, be communicated to council, to, um, to the state legislators as they convene in January. Also, I would encourage the city council to support um, in order to attract, continue to attract highly qualified staff for our public schools, teachers and education support professionals, we need to continue to make the profession attractive um, and competitive for our state and our locality. So I would still encourage that the state would ask the state to share the salary increases that we still need to have for teachers who, in terms of comp being competitive nationwide and also protecting our VRS benefits and um, in retirement. Also fully funding the standards of quality, that's going to be very important, and also emphasis a high emphasis on early childhood education and other specialty programs in our city. And um, there's also an, an attempt by the state to undermine the um, continuing contract due process for teachers who are established with a continuing contract. We would like to 
make sure that we have a resolution in place that will look at that issue because that almost happened in the last session and that would t terribly deteriorate the quality of our teachers. If we, if we don't have a system to protect them for their years of service, work in the profession, then we're gonna lose so many good teachers and it won't be reasonable justification, just, oh, you've taken too much time off, maybe you may have a sick family member, it could be anything, but this, this is something that we really need to look at for the continuing contract. This is gonna help the future for education. And in reference to, I wasn't aware that that was the issue about the, the mayor change. I'm not in support of that. I think we do need to look at that a little bit more. Um, and maybe we should even consider having the elections change to November because the elections turnouts are poor. Last, the last Super Bowl election in May, we didn't even have but slightly over 12,000 people that voted in the entire city. That was a citywide election, so that should tell us that we're wasting our resources with May, or May elections. We need to change like the other localities have and have them coincide with state and federal elections. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alton Robinson. Um, good evening, Mayor Frame, Council Members. Uh, my name is Alton Robinson. My address is 735 West 35th Street. Um, I truly don't believe I have the legal terminology to be able to sway anybody on council from voting I on this issue. But I think about the fact that it's a public hearing, and being a public hearing, there's not many people here to uh, speak on this public hearing. I read from my uh, iPad where I got it on the internet, and it mentions about um, an election and, and to approve Norfolk's 2013 legislative priorities package. That's for those who get it electronically. And if a <coughs> citizen was to come down here and get it hard copy, <coughs> doesn't mention anything about any um, priority packages. Also, if for so many years, we know the mayor had been appointed and recently we had a couple of at-large elections. If something works, I don't see no reason trying to fix it. Um, last week we had a presidential election and at our, in our community, at the precinct polls, the lines was long, all day long. So when people see a worthy candidate and, and they want to make some type of history People will come out and vote. And being that this city, and you can check the history, has never had an African-American mayor in its existence. So now, if we was to have the opportunity to have an African-American mayor, what effect or impact would this have? Do any of the citizens know? Do anybody know? What's the purpose of wanting to change this today? What's the reason for it? this date, that it can't be set off to another date to give people an opportunity to come out, not to mention the fact that there's a school board meeting that's very important too, that a lot of citizens are at the school board meeting that are normally held on a Wednesday will give people opportunity to have some concern about this, to come down here and have something to say about this. I wanted to be at the school board meeting, so then I had to flip a coin and say, should I be at the school board meeting or should I be at the city council meeting? Because I voted in this election, and I was like, man, I think voting is very important. And this is something that's going to change. The, the, I don't know what is going to change, and I really don't even know the purpose of it changing. But I know that there's a change coming, and there's a change coming to the charter. The charter, that's the city. That's what, that's what the city was built on, the charter. So now we're changing. That's just like a constitutional amendment. You know, Congress will battle. Democrats, Republicans, they'll battle for a constitutional amendment change. But here it is. We got a charter change. And it's up to eight people to make that decision without the public hearing, without the public really coming out to be heard and saying, hey, why are we doing this right now? And do we really have to do this today? Can we put it all to tomorrow? Thank you. Thanks. Um, we have, in fact, uh, put this off for, for several years since we went to the properly elected mayor just to see how, how the, the votes and the process would work. Um, the only thing being asked here is that instead of having on one May election having six seats open, council seats open, you have five, 
and then you move the mayor over to the point over to the election cycle where only two members of council are running. <clears throat> so you have an equal you have a more equal balance of five people on a ballot and then three on a ballot with the a hope with the hope that it will increase the turnout on the super ward election time when you have two. That's the only thing going on here. And this notion about changing the election to November, which was mentioned, and I've only I've not Mr. Hawkins was the only for only person I've ever heard actually in the city of Norfolk say that was a good idea. But the the matters are separate and apart. I know what the newspaper has said. You could do this and then somebody could still discuss November, which I'm not in favor of actually right now. But in any event, it seems to me like this is a small step to try to make for a better to to create a better process for the for the community. And that's that's all. <clears throat> okay, if you'd call the vote. I have a resolution supporting the 2013 legislative package and an amendment of the Norfolk City Charter, Section 18, so as to cause the date of the election for mayor after 2014 to coincide with elections of the Super Wards. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. Um, the consent agenda. There are a number of items there. Would any member of the council like to have any of these matters considered separately? Great. Call the roll. Approve the consent agenda, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Pertuziru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Mm -hmm. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1, please. Mr. President, this yeah. is okay. This, this matter will be to motion is to can move is to continue until December 13th. December 11, Mr. President. December 11th. Yes, sir. Mr. Burfitt, aye. Mr. Protegiru, aye. Mr. Riddick, aye. Mr. Smigel, aye. Dr. Wibley, aye. Ms. Williams, aye. Mr. Wynn, aye. Mr. Frame, aye. R2. R2 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a used merchandise sales establishment located at 5038 East Princess Anne Road. By 5 2 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. And the ordinance being read is amended as you discussed in your informal session. The hours would right. be from 9 a.m. to 7 a.m. <coughs> okay. <coughs> we need to discuss that with the applicant first, or? It's within this council's discretion. It would also be within your discretion whether you wanted to postpone it and discuss it. I think it. it would be appropriate to at least have a conversation with the individual to let them know that. Um, this body has made a decision as it relates to. Uh, there may be some time sensitivity. Frank, you. Can, <clears throat> go ahead, Frank. Mr. Mayor, the applicant is present. They they got here a little late uh, for the meeting. I have spoken with the applicant about the proposed change in hours. She's indicated they have no problem with it. They had never intended to stay open as late as nine o'clock. Okay. Just want to okay. be respectful. Right. Um, aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3. An ordinance permitting Carl Thomas to encroach into the right of way at 1618 Shepherd Avenue, 15 feet plus or minus, to the back of the existing curb with, existed, with existing decorative landscaping, block walls, wood, and block planters. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Just um, real quickly, I, um, it's more of a council interest at this time, but um, I just think at some point we need to look at our rules when it comes to fences and what's allowed and not allowed. And I don't know if you've ever dealt with a constituent that's had to remove uh, every other placard off of a fence that they thought they put up legally or they didn't know. And some of the restrictions on corners, they tend to be like you have to put a two-foot fence up and it's not realistic for some people, but just down the road, maybe um, it's something that we can address as a council. Those little things come up quite a bit in communities where they didn't know um, what they were supposed to follow. Um, it's kind of a hidden gray area when it comes to fences, and it just made me think of this when I was looking at this guy is following um, procedures about getting that, that easement. But um, I'd be interested in looking at some of those strict requirements when it comes to the fences, but I... Dr. Wibley? Corners and things. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. No. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4. 
An ordinance permitting 919 21st Street LLC to encroach into the right of way of West 21st Street, four feet, one inch, more or less, with an eight inch metal canopy, eight feet, six inches above the sidewalk, also three feet, more or less, with an awning, eight feet, six inches above the sidewalk, and lighting beneath the awning. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfoot? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance accepting a Department of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Evening Reporting Center Program Award of $25,000 um, from the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services to support a program for placement supervision and intervention needs of youth on probation and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds for the program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance accepting $42,500 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management Fiscal Year 2011 Homeland Security Grant Program and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for the purchase of license plate readers for the Hampton Roads Urban Area Security Initiative Region Grant Program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance to waive building permit fees for repair <coughs> of certain structures damaged by Hurricane Sandy. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. A resolution approving the exercise by the Economic Development Authority of the City of Norfolk of powers conferred by the Industrial Development and Revenue Bond Act and Ordinances 26565, 27524, and 4357 of the City of Norfolk in conjunction with the issuance of Bond Secours Health System, Inc., a Maryland non-stock non-profit membership corporation, and Bond Secours to Paul Medical Center, Inc., and Mary Immaculate Hospital, Incorporated each a Virginia non-stock corporation of not to exceed $25 million of the authority's revenue bonds in order to pay or reimburse the hospitals for the cost of acquiring, constructing, equipping, expanding, enlarging, and improving their acute care hospital facilities, refund all or a portion of the outstanding principal amount of the Peninsula Ports Authority of Virginia Health Care Revenue and Refunding Bond Series 1997, pay a portion of the interest on the bonds if deemed necessary, fund a debt service reserve fund if deemed necessary, and pay certain costs incurred in connection with the issuance of the bonds and the refunding of the series 1997 bonds. It's got to be a better way to do that. Yes. Um, Amy Curran is here to answer questions. Sorry, Ms. Curran, are you here? Um, you're the attorney for? Yes. And, okay. And did you really come all the way from Chicago? I really did. You did? I saw this on your address. Well, you okay. a lot of money on these bonds. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we have any questions. I, the only question I had was, it was whether it really I came from Chicago. Chicago. I did. Okay. While you're here, spend exactly. some money in our restaurant. Is your meter running? I did. I just had dinner at Ah Shucks. Right. Okay. Very good. Good. It's all right. It's a direct flight. Th I thanks for anywhere. I know. Day, so <laughs> I know no it is. Deal. Okay. <laughs> thanks for being here. Welcome. All right. Call the roll. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt. Her meter's running. Right Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R9. An ordinance granting 426 Granby LLC permission to encroach into the right of way of 428 Granby Street and improving the terms and conditions of the encroachment agreement. Please, no. Yeah. S dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Shoot. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Frame? Aye. R10. An ordinance approving the right of entry agreement. With the Downtown Norfolk Development Corporation, trading as Downtown Norfolk Council and Atlantic Coast S Gagers, a train club. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R11. An ordinance approving the conveyance of an easement by Norfolk Southern Railway Company to the City of Norfolk and authorizing the City Manager to accept the deed of easement on behalf of the City. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R12. An ordinance approving the donation by the Chrysler Museum, Inc. to the City of Norfolk 
of certain parcels of property located in the city and described as lots 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32, Block 4, Platt of South Kent Land Company, and that certain parcel of property described as Disposition Parcel 34A1, as shown on the plat, um, and authorizing the city manager to accept a deed of gift on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to Air Fusion Solutions LLC of $21,099.42 plus interest based on correction of business personal property tax assessment for tax year 2012. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R14. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to HB Hunter Company of $2,948.53 uh, plus interest based on correction of business personal property tax assessment for tax year 2012. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R15. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund outside Network Inc. of $2,581.19 plus interest based on correction of business license tax assessment for tax year 2012. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R16. A resolution uh, appointing Director of Public Works John Kiefer as the alternate to the city's ex officio member of the Board of Directors of the Southeastern Public Service Authority of Virginia. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? I don't know. <laughs> Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Give an add-on. Additional item, Mr. Right. President. Yes, sir. Number R17, and it's a resolution uh, appointing and reappointing four persons to the Norfolk Design Review Committee for certain terms. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Oh, sorry. Mr. Aye. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you very much. That concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda. There are three.